In our lab, we'll be using various radioactive samples. This is our alpha source, we can see labeled as polonium-210. It has one microbecquerel of radioactive intensity and a half-life of 136 days. We can see the sample was purchased in November 2004, and therefore, at about two years, the sample has gone through approximately four half-lives. This will be noted in its low activity. When we flip it over, we're looking for a small sample of polonium. It's smaller than the prick of a pin. Our beta source is strontium-90. It has one microbecquerel of radioactivity with a half-life of 28 years. With such a long half-life being bought in November 2004, it has undergone very little change and is still highly radioactive, as we'll see when we get to the second part. When we flip the sample over, we see that the strontium-90 is actually contained within the plastic seal. Again, smaller than the head of a pin, we wouldn't see it anyway. Here we see our gamma ray source of cobalt-60. It also has one microbecquerel of radioactivity and a half-life that we can see to be 5.3 years. Therefore, it's gone through about a half of a half-life with about 0.7 uh, of its original amount remaining. So it's still highly radioactive. This lab is to determine the penetrating power of various radioactive sources. We see here an alpha ray source, beta, and gamma sources for radioactive decay. Penetrating power is the ability of the source particles to go through different materials. The Geiger counter will occasionally click at this time, giving us an indication of the background radiation or natural radiation surrounding us. There's one now as an example. When we take the alpha source and place it in front of the Geiger counter's measuring opening, we can hear the increase in the clicking rate of our Geiger counter. Taking a simple piece of paper folded four times, we can insert this between the alpha source and the Geiger counter. Notice the clicking has stopped. The only clicking we hear now is again due to the natural background radiation. Paper is thick enough and high enough density to block the emission of alpha particles. In this case, alpha ray is never used for treating internal cancers because it simply cannot penetrate into the body. Replacing the alpha source with a beta source, we hear quite a large volume of clicking. This is not that the particles necessarily have more power than the alpha particles, although we'll see that they do. It's simply a more active sample. It has higher radioactivity, a longer half-life. We'll again insert the paper between the beta particles and the Geiger counter. Notice there's no difference in the clicking of the Geiger counter. So what will block beta particles? To test, we take a piece of aluminum foil, fold it over four times. The aluminum foil, while more dense than the paper, has slowed down the clicking fractionally, but not enough to truly block the beta particles. Taking a single sheet of lead and inserting it between the beta particles and the Geiger counter, we can see that lead is dense enough to block the path of beta particles. Beta particles have more penetrating power than alpha, but not enough to penetrate through lead. We'll replace the beta particles with a source of gamma particles. Again, we can hear the clicking from the, back, from the radiation given off by the gamma source. It's more active than the alpha source, but less active than the beta. Again, we'll start trying to block the gamma rays by inserting four sheets of paper, as shown. The clicking has not changed. Paper does not block gamma rays. Taking the four sheets of aluminum foil, again we insert these. Still no change in the clicking rate. So gamma particles are not blocked by aluminum foil. We'll test it with the sheet of lead. There has been a decrease, but there's still radiation getting through from the gamma source to the Geiger counter. A second sheet of lead can be inserted. The counter continues to click. Therefore, two sheets of lead are not thick enough to prevent the penetration of the gamma particles. Another sheet of lead, folded over, gives us four sheets of lead now that can be inserted between the Geiger counter and the gamma ray source. The clicking has still been reduced, 
but in fact is still penetrating four sheets of lead. In this case, we see that the penetrating power of the radioactive particles is weakest in alpha particles, then beta particles, and most powerful in the gamma rays. To give an idea of what it takes to block gamma ray radiation, this lead container shows the thickness of lead necessary to block the penetration of gamma rays. All three sources can be placed inside with the lid used to seal it. They're still clicking slightly higher than background levels. <laughs>